What up, though, guys? It's your girl, Jaja, and we are live here with Miss Asia Asaka from Asia Nicole Creations. And we are learning how to crochet tonight. So if you're tuning in, who is that? I am Jalen J.H. Lynn. Hey, y'all. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're cool, chilling and maxing and relaxing and chilling like a villain. Um, we are live with Asia Nicole. So, Asia hey Nicole guys. Creations. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. So, uh, you have been uh, doing crocheting, and we're doing and celebrating the um, month of melanin and yes. celebrating that tonight. I'm super duper excited because um, you have been crocheting for how long? Um, so, I learned how to crochet when I was like eight years old. My okay. mom taught me. But I got back into it when I was about like nineteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a long, that's a long time. Okay. Oh, that's a long time. I'm a little older, guys. A little older. We say season. You don't gotta season. say older. It's a, season. You season, honey. It's been, it's been about what, like. 15 years? Okay. For about 15 years? That's a long time. That is a long time to be crocheting, okay? Yes. I don't I don't even um I don't even think that um I've been doing what I've been doing that long um in terms of media, but I've been doing it all my life. Exactly. You kind of know that you've been doing certain things all your life yeah. without knowing professionally there's a profession attached to it. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. So, because I've always been creative, like the kid that wants to make clothes out of scraps and just learn new things. And I think that for, for me, crocheting is just, it's like super relaxing. Mm -hmm. And once you get the hang of it, you can do it forever. So, it's not just for your grandmother or anybody like that. Anybody can pick it up and learn it. And you know what's so crazy? The stigma that um, crocheting is for old people. Exactly. Uh, you know, you usually have a grandma to make some mittens or, you know, make something like that or some gloves. And yeah. it's usually um, an, an elder association with it. Exactly. And not an actual affiliation of this is something that we want to do. Yeah. Now, because you're doing um, crocheting, what is some of the first things that a person needs to have or do if they want to start off with crocheting? crocheting. Yeah. Okay, so usually you would have like a crochet kit. So when I got back into crocheting, I went and I bought a kit that came with a crochet hook, a thing of yarn, and instructions on how to make, I believe it was like a scarf. Mm -hmm. So I made a crochet kit for a beginner. Okay. So in my kit, I have a standard crochet hook. I hope y'all can see that. It's a crochet hook. You have a ball yarn, a beginner's ball yarn. And I always suggest that when you're starting out crocheting, do not spend a gang of money on yarn. Like, you can find some really good yarn for, like, under $3. You don't need a lot of stuff because you're practicing. You're learning how to make it. Okay. Um, scissors so you can cut the stuff. You can cut when you're finished. Then a notebook. So, I personally always keep a notebook with me. Because I always have ideas, especially when I'm in a craft store. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, I can make this, I can do this. So I always need to take write my notes down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this will keep you on track for your projects as well. And then you start to create something. Because I do a lot of stuff off the top of my head. So I write it out so I know how to go about it. And a pen. So that's what's in the crochet kit. And as you get more advanced, you can add more things to your kit. As far as like um, a darning needle, that's a... Um, Put all your ends away. You might add um, different patterns that you receive. Mm -hmm. And then once you learn how to do more things, you'll add more stuff to your crochet repertoire. But for a starter kit, this is a good starter kit. So in here, it's like two balls of yarn, which will really get you started because you'll be able to work on something, take it apart, start over, keep going, and learn that way with your crochet kit. Now, when you started off crocheting at 19 years old, usually a 19-year-old that I know, they in the club, they want to hang out. They what made you <laughs> what made you pick up this craft? So, okay. Honestly, I was doing that, hanging out, going to the club with my friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think I went it was I went to a craft store and I was like, oh, I can practice this yarn because I had did it before, crocheting. So I just picked it up. And once I picked it up, it was like 
You know how they be like, love at first sight? I found mm -hmm. my boo. Like, I found something that I was really into. So I just picked it up, and I've been doing it ever since. That's wow. beautiful. Yeah. Now, during this time frame of you developing this skill, did you have anybody that you could, like, learn from or glean from to to teach you? What was that like, finding, like, your, your tribe? So, first, I didn't have anybody that, that could teach me how to do it. So mm -hmm. I basically taught myself how to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I eventually went to like a yarn store and like took a class to learn how to do it, to learn more skills towards it. But basically just self-taught, just taught myself how to do it. That's beautiful. And probably watch like YouTube videos and I'm more of a visual learner. So I watch them and then I'll just work on making it myself until it look like what they made. That's beautiful. So yeah. a ball of yarn usually goes for how much? So a ball of yarn can be anywhere from like a dollar to maybe like fourteen dollars. It depends on the skein because there's called a skein of yarn. Mm. So it depends on what kind of yarn it is. Okay. It could be wool. Wool is way more. Um, acrylic yarn, like hundred percent soft, that might be more. But it really just depends on the color, the brand of yarn, the style, what you making, how big the yarn is. So it really just all depends. But you can look to pay anywhere between like a dollar twenty five. Up to like maybe like twenty dollars, depending on what you're making. So I know that during the pandemic, you were making masks. I yes. purchased. I purchased one of Asia <laughs> Creations, Ma Asia Nicole Creations masks. So make sure that as she's selling her merchandise, that you guys get out and support her. Yeah, I have a website. It's AsianNicoleCreations.com. Come on, say it one more time for the people uh, in the back. My website is AsianNicoleCreations.com. On there currently, I just have. Air warmer cozies and hats, but more things are going to be added to the site. Like the hat that you got on your head. Yes. Yeah, so this is just something. This is a hat that I made. Yes, hat that you made. Let me see your hat, girl. Sorry. Hmm. Y'all better come through, hat. She made that. Okay. Yeah, it's a oversized beanie. Oversized beanie. We need to get you a tag up in here, girl. Yeah. So I have labels now, but that's an older hat. But yes, hat. labels. Come on, labels. Yes. So you literally. Take a yarn, um, a ball of yarn, yeah. and your mind forms an idea yeah. of what you want to create, and then you find those colors, and you create it. Yes. So, like, for me, I... I need to stay off the yarn store, right now. <laughs> out the craft store. But when I see certain colors, I start thinking like, "Oh, this would be sweet if this could be um, be a scarf or a hat or a blanket or like a shawl." Because I have a scarf that I make. It's called a three-way scarf, which I should have brought. I didn't bring in here, but it's a three-way scarf. Like I just come up with mad ideas, and that's what kind of gets me in trouble a little bit because I end up with an abundance of yarn. But, um, but yeah, so I just try to execute the ideas that I have that come to mind. So, yeah, it's That's just beautiful. like, it's like a, being a kid in a candy store. So like when you find your thing, you just be super excited. about And, it. and speaking of your thing, Asia, you are also going to school for fashion design, design and, marketing management. and marketing and management. And, um, it's a beautiful thing because a lot of people give up on their dreams, right? Yes. Um, and you've, you've had, um, trials and challenges and tribulations throughout your time frame since 19. Yeah. Um, you know, we're 30 plus, okay? You <laughs> know, young and fine, okay? <laughs> but in from 19 to where we are now, what were some of the hindrances to you really finding your 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 zhuzh, your niche? You know, because sometimes when things aren't working the way we want them to work, we give up, right? Yes. I've always I wanted to give up on things when it wasn't working for me in my particular industry. What were some of the obstructions or challenges that you had to overcome and face so when I first started school I left and went away to school went to fairs went away I ended up coming home due to like some family stuff and once I got home I got a job then I started crocheting um some of the challenges were just like normal things you go through like having to work um I ended up getting a job where I could get bumped from shift to shift so that was a challenge that I had. I remember I was in the middle of my semester and I had to drop all my classes because I got bumped from days. No, I got bumped from afternoons to days. All my classes were in the middle of the day. So it's been those kind of tribulations as far as like having money for school, 
Um, and then just being focused, because you know, life happens. You be focused on the wrong stuff. Like, oh my God, he didn't call me back. Or, oh my God, you know, <laughs> just find yourself worried about the wrong thing. So for me, it's just always been one of those things that no matter what, it might not look like I want it to look right now. I might be on this journey that doesn't look like I'm getting to my destination, but you just got to stay the path and know that whatever occurs during your journey, it helps you become the person you're supposed to be. And then it helps you know, like you can do whatever you want to do. So like my motto in life is that it's never too late to be what you want it to be. Like never give up on your dreams because your dreams are what forge you ahead to just be better and then show other people like, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. So whatever you want to do, however old you are, shit, if you want me, excuse me. If you want to go to the, whatever you, you want to shoot for the stars, go for it. Like it's never too late. And those trials and tribulations that we have, that I have personally, it'll make you want to sit somewhere and be like, forget it. Like I'm done with it. Yeah. But every time I felt like that, it's always with something just, I don't know how to describe it. Like something pushing you. A nag. Like, like a nag. Like, oh, I can't give up on this. I got to keep pushing at this. Or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, let me get up and do this because mm -hmm. I got to keep making a step towards my goal. Yeah. And remember that every time, everybody's time frame is not your time frame, right? Just because your homegirl or your homeboy, they done graduated or they look like they living a life or whatever. Everything isn't always what it seems. That part. So just work. Your journey, I would say. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Now, speaking of journey, what is the first step? Okay? Because we are here to learn how to crochet. Okay? So, what's the first step to get in a crochet? <laughs> okay. 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 So, we got our kits. Okay? We got the Asia Nicole Creations kit. Okay. Um, okay. We just coined out by Okay. Oh, so I'm getting some yarn. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing to me now? You Are you like just, I no, feel like I'm you're throwing to, money at me like I'm no, a stripper with the yarn. No, I'm not throwing money at you. I'm trying to get it so it's not tied in. Okay, that's okay. hold it. So I hold the string. I get my, I get my ball of, my, so I shouldn't say string. I should say yarn. That's the proper it's term. It's yarn. Yeah, it's yarn. Okay. So get your ball of yarn. Okay. Okay. Oh, you got yours? You got yours? Okay. Everybody got their yarn? Okay, so okay, so normally when you start out with your ball of yarn, some people will take it and they'll roll it up into a ball. You know how you see those commercials or those videos where cats playing with a ball of yarn? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes you can roll it into a ball to make it easier for you. Um, or you can just pull it, find the end, and start at the end. So the way that I have um, so like this? them starting, yeah. So no, leave. Okay, stop. Leave okay, it. don't do nothing. nothing. Y'all am already getting in trouble with the crochet class. <laughs> Okay, keep yours like that. So okay. this will be the end of yours. And okay. you can do the same thing. Wind yours up and just keep the end. So what you want to do is you find your end of your yarn. If you don't decide to do it in a ball. So if you had way more yarn, like a bigger skein of yarn, then you could wrap it into a ball so that it doesn't get tangled as you go along. Okay? okay. So everybody need a crochet hook. Crochet um, hook. So when you say crochet hook, because I see it says 5.5 millimeter, right? Yeah. So the way it's set up is that usually the yarn that you have, it'll say the kind of yarn on the front, it'll say the kind of yarn you have. Mm -hmm. It'll say this is 100% acrylic yarn. It's medium weight. And then it'll give you an estimated hook size you should use. Okay. So on here it says you should use about a 5 millimeter hook or a 5.5. Okay. So for me, I just use the hook that I like, honestly. I usually stick with like a 4.5 for myself, okay? So, um, what you do is when you first start, you want to make a slip knot. So, okay. the way that you would make a slip oh, knot. No, no, no. Oh, my bad. See, I'm all. You good. You good. All right. So, um, everybody got a crochet hook, okay? Yep. So, you'll take the end of the yarn, right? You want to make a slip knot. So, the way that you would make that is... You'll make a loop around your index finger. Make a loop around your finger. Okay. You want to give yourself some string. You want to have a nice little end. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Wrap it around your finger. With the piece that's hanging right here on the end. I hope y'all can see this. But the piece that's hanging on the end, you want to press that down with your thumb. Okay. So the loop that's wrapped around your thumb, you want to pull that up with your other hand. Okay. Pull it up just a little bit. Okay. So with the loop that you have pressed down with your 
thumb on your, which would be my left hand, which would be our right hand, you want to pull that through, okay? I think I'm doing it. You got it? Y'all got it? I think I'm doing it. I think I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. So I'm once late. you do that, okay, then you want to remove your index finger and then pull it up. Oh, okay. Shit. Shoot. I, ain't, I don't think okay. I did. <laughs> All okay. right. Dang, no, no. You got it. That's because you be making okay. clothes, though. Okay. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to make your loop a little shorter, oh. just a little bit. Once you give yourself a little bit of space, so make your loop maybe about that big, okay? Maybe. So you want your loop to be maybe the size of like a nickel. Yeah, that's a nickel. Yeah. No, not a nickel. That's not a nickel. That's, that's a, a dime, dime y'all. Look at me. Okay. That's a dime. Say, you, want it to, you want it to be a dime size, okay? So I, once you have that, okay, let me help you out. Because I'm wrapping it around my fingers. So it's okay. So <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It takes a minute. So once you get past this first step, then you good, okay? Because this first step, I have you somewhere in the corner with an attitude. Okay. You don't give yourself a minute. So just breathe and start over. <sighs> All right, you good? Okay. I'm good. All right. Okay. So what you do, I'm going to repeat this step again. You're going to wrap the loop around your index finger, Boom. right? And press it with your thumb, okay? Once you do that, you're going to loop it around one more time and hold it with your thumb and your index finger, okay? Once you got that, then you're going to push, you're going to pull the string up, the one that you're holding with your thumb and index finger, okay? You're going to take the loop that's hanging, and you're going to pull it through. Almost like you're tying a shoe. Yeah, it's like you're tying your shoelace, but you're basically making a, a, a knot. knot. Okay. So now you will have your first slip knot, okay? All, All right. right. So now here comes the fun part, okay? So I need to, do I need to open mine up a little bit more? Yeah, you can open it up a little bit. That's okay. good. Excuse me. Um, okay. So now you got that, all right? So everybody should have a slip, a piece, a slip knot on here. So now this is kind of like when you're learning how to use chopsticks. I'll say that. So whichever hand, if you're right-handed, y'all right-handed? Mm -hmm. Right-handed, okay. So you want to take your crochet hook in your right hand. You want to hold it down with your thumb and your index finger on your right hand, like I have it right here. On your other hand, you should have, your slip knot should just be hanging and you should have a string hanging down, okay? Once you have that, you wanna take the loop of the ball of yarn right here, you wanna take that and you wanna wrap it around your finger. So your middle finger and your ring finger, you wanna wrap this around here, okay? Mm -hmm. So you see how I have the yarn wrapped around my middle finger and my ring finger on my left hand? That's how you want to have the yarn while you're still holding the crochet hook in your hand, okay? okay? And what you can do for that little tail that's hanging, you can take it and you can wrap it around. You can put it in between your middle finger and your ring finger on your um, right hand, okay? So now we got ourselves set up, right? Now listen, once you have oh, on your, so we're on thing. your left hand. I hope y'all follow me. Y'all probably like, what the, what's she saying? Just, just follow me. I'm telling you, it's going to get good. <laughs> just follow me, follow me. So once you good. have it on your left hand right here, you're going to notice that on your index finger, you have a loop wrapped around on your index finger, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So now you're going to keep your crochet hook in your right hand. But you're going to have your slip knot in your left hand, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to put the loop back through your fingers. And you're going to take your crochet hook. And you're going to bring it through that hole that we just made. Okay? All right, let me see. Man, I done messed up. It's okay. Keep going. Look, we two fingers in right here, sis. Yeah, so on your... Two fingers. Yeah, but I ain't got no loop around my index finger. That's no, because you're, you're not putting it on your index. You're putting it on the two middle. So put it, yeah. Yeah, put it on we, two yep. okay. There we go. There you go. We on the bus. We on the bus. Okay. You on the bus with us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so your ring finger, you gonna take your hand that you your right hand, take it and put your crochet hook through the loop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you wanna hold, take that little string that's hanging, put it in between your ring finger and your uh, middle finger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. that string should be hanging on the side. Okay. 
Okay. So now we got this set up, right? So what you want to do is kind of pull the string, kind of tighten it a little bit on your loop. Not too tight because your hook got to get through there. So just tighten it a little bit. What what are we tightening the hook? You're, you're going to tighten the um the slip knot that you made around Ooh, your crochet hook okay. a little bit. Not too tight because you got to be able to get the yarn through there. Okay. 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 So now we have that. So then we're going to make our first loop. So when I make my first loop, I hold my yarn with my thumb and my middle finger, right? Okay. And then I take my loop here, my thumb is on a crochet hook, and my, um, what is this, my index finger is holding the crochet hook. So I'm going to go under, over, right? So we yeah. under, over, and pull through. Oh, start over, sis. Okay, sorry. Okay. Have we hooked here? So we here, you're going to take the hook. And you're going to go under. Under. And you're going to see it come out the top, right? You see it? Mm. You under, and then you pull it through. Under. And pull it through. So your hook is too tight. You have your slip knot too tight on you. <laughs> it's too tight. I heard that before. Wait, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anywho. So, okay. So now hold your hook, your stuff in your hand again. Okay. So now, once you got yourself set back up, you're going to take it. You see how I got it wrapped around? Okay, so my hands are like this. I'm taking it down here. Yep, and you're going to pull it through. But you want to tighten that end that you're holding and then pull it through. Pull the loop that's on your hook through. Pull the loop on your hook through. Okay, it's not. Oh, so... So don't be afraid of the yarn, right? Okay. You can't, it can't do nothing to you. It's just, don't be afraid of it. You just okay. gotta tighten up. You wanna have a little tension on that left hand. Okay, got gotcha. you. So once like... you put the two, yeah. So pull it through. So it'll be like this. So look at what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You see how I got it through here? Okay. And I turn it over. Mm-hmm. I'm holding this right here. Okay. You keep this. Keep your left um, index finger out. You gonna pull over. You see how I'm holding it? Mm, so we hold that area where that knot is. Yeah. Okay. And then you keep pulling it through to make your first loop. Oh okay. snap! That was like magic. Okay. Huh. And I'm so learning now, how to crochet. And so now that you have that on there, you gonna hold it like this. You'll keep your fingers here, mm -hmm. and you'll just keep making a loop. Okay. So every time you crochet, you, every time you bring it through, you're gonna keep making a loop. Okay. Okay. So pretty much, it's almost like swooping baby hairs, but with yarn. Basically, yeah. Okay. So it'd be like that. So you're gonna do. So I pull it. So you can bring this over here, so it's like coming towards you, you know. So. You see how my fingers holding it? Mm -hmm. So then, okay. So then, like, two, two. I think I got it. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you see how I got it? You gonna hold the yarn with your thumb and your middle finger. You gonna loop it through. Loop once. Loop twice. Loop three times. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once you get the loop on there, then just keep oh, doing that and you make a chain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you see how I'm holding it? Hold that there, and then bring it through your. Two fingers like that. I'm crocheting, ninjas. And then this, you want to keep. You can keep this finger out, kind of <laughs> extend okay. it. Okay. And then what you say, do this? Yeah, but you wanna, you wanna keep it so you can see the loop. Okay. So you, once you have it on here, so you wanna kind of have a little tension. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this finger right here. Okay, let me see. So you see how I kind of got a little tension, like I'm using this as tension, yeah. my index finger. Once you do that, then you will swoop it through. Okay. So, yo. So it's going over with a line. Yeah. Okay. And then just keep going. Okay. You got it? Oh, let me I'm give you a chance it. to pick the bra up. My bad. <laughs> so go under. No, don't go over. Go under. Go under. So this right here, you want to mm. keep, keep your loop a little loose, okay? 
Because your hook has to be able to get through it. Okay. And you don't want to make it too tight. So look at me. Keep this loose, right? Then bring it through. And then you can tighten it. But you don't want it too tight. Because after you make your first chain, you want to be able to make your second chain. Okay, but don't bring it over. Okay. I'm about to be in your personal space, okay? okay. I'm about to get it. I'm about to get in your personal space. Bring this back. Okay. Bring it through. Okay, so I got the slip knot. Okay. Okay. I can slip knot. Make it loose, though. You don't want it to Yeah, I'm tightening it too tight. Yeah, okay. so loosen it up because you want to be able to get start your next level, okay? Mm -hmm. okay so and then said. pull it through. Okay. So use this, hold that as tension, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. pull it through. But you want to, you can put some of this on your other hand, so. This is crazy. I usually get this type of stuff. Hold on. Man, ain't this a, this is a craft, boy. Man. I'm doing this. Mm. I think I got it. I'm holding it right here. I think I got Again, it, y'all. I don't know. It under, okay. <laughs> yep, loop it under. So hold it right here with your thumb and index finger. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's let's see you do it right quick. Okay. Go go ahead. Go ham on the uh go ham on the crochet for us one time. Because I'm, I'm still I'm on the loop. <laughs> okay, so once you get past that first chain and those first couple of stitches, you start to get your rhythm, right? Once you get your rhythm, you got it, okay? So, we are going to make a loop. Got my loop. So, normally, if you know what you're going to make or you're following the pattern, it'll be like, chain 13, right? <laughs> you know, chain 13 stitches. Mm -hmm. So, they always say the first loop that's on your hook that doesn't count. That's like your beginner loop. So when they say chain 13, you really chain to 14. So let's chain 14. Well, 13 because I already chained one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you count it out? 12, 13. You count it out if you got a project that you're reading the directions from, right? You can count it out once you, like, if you're practicing at making something. You got you it. You might, okay, now, I see you out here doing this. You is doing it, no. Oh, man. <laughs> you got to concentrate, B. Look, I'm still on the lock. <laughs> okay, so, once you have your chain, you'll have a chain like this, right? So, I chain 13, okay? So, I'm going to let them... Get caught up a little bit, and then we'll go to your next row. How you do your next row? So some people don't crochet or do projects like that because they find themselves being like, I guess, intimidated by it, kind of, you know. But don't be intimidated by it. Like, it just take a minute to learn. But you have stuff on your hook. What happened? I took them off because them was yours, and I wanted my own. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Um, but I'm back lost again. Okay. So here, I'm here. Where yeah, am I going here. here? So once you here, you wrap this around. This is your tension, okay? Mm -hmm. You take your thumb and your middle finger and you hold it. You see how my thumb and my index finger is pressed on the um, crochet hook? Mm -hmm. And then my three fingers is kind of cradled around it? Mm -hmm. You're going to make a loop. Make a loop. Make a loop. This is your tension to stop okay. you from going too far. Okay? Okay. All right. Tension, loop, hold. Yeah. Here. Tension. Hold. Hold yourself, fool. So, um, a lot of crochet classes can be more hands-on to kind of help you get your technique together. But you bringing it under, not over. You going under. Okay? I'm going that way. Yes, but the way you holding it. So, look. You see how my hands are? You see how these is pointed out like this? Mm-hmm. These two are your, supposed to be your dominant fingers. This is holding this, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is around here. So mm -hmm. hold that. Mm -hmm. That's holding this on the side move. And then you just bring your loop through. Bring your loop through. Okay? Okay. So hold your fingers like this. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yo, I'm at school. We in crochet class. <laughs> We're answering the co-creations. I hope you guys are having a great time. Now, what people don't understand is we're in Black History Month. Yes. And um, this was something that a lot of our ancestors would do to help make clothes and 
stuff that we didn't have available. When you discovered your new hidden talent and gift, did you correlate any of that to black history? Or did you find out some important black history facts connected to this to this gift? So the the one thing that I connected to as far as black history goes is just that as black people were all creative. Like they would do basket weaving, making different clothes, and it just just made me want to do it more, right? So that's how I related to black history is that at the end of the day we're always creative and we can take anything and make it be something new. So that's how I relate crocheting to Black History Month. Okay. And then it's a skill too, like you wouldn't know it, but a lot of black women crochet. I belong to a group on Facebook called Black Girls Who Craft. Really? And it's a lot of us on there who make different things from crocheting, making clothes, just everything. So it's just letting you know that whatever talents you might think, whatever projects or things like this being creative might not have been for you, you can do whatever you want to do. And I know there's one, I can't think of her name right now, but there's one lady who crochets, like she has a whole thing, like a yarn that she sells. And then also there is a black owned crochet store that just opened downtown called Park Avenue. It's okay. really nice. So yeah. Okay, that's awesome. That's dope. That's dope. So in the meantime, between time, how long does it take to make something that you like want to make? Like say a scarf or something. So one scarf can take me about, I'd say about two hours, two and a half hours. And that's me just sitting there crocheting the scarf, like watching TV and crocheting the scarf. So like this is a scarf that I made. It probably took me about, about two hours, maybe wow. two and a half hours to add the, um, the little fringe to it at the bottom. So let me see that. So you made this? Yes. Wow. So how do you start something like this? So you, you started <laughs> like, with your... <laughs> like, where do you start? So you basically started the way we're starting now. You started mm -hmm. with the chain and you just keep going. So that one is like a continuation. Like, mm. I just kept going upward, 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 and I just added the fringe at the bottom. So. So, how did you connect this? Like, you just go up and down, up and down, up and down, and it creates yeah, the layer? up and down, up and down. So, I'll show you. So, okay. I'm on my second row. So, this would be a scarf that I'm making. It's a little skinny scarf, but just a little sample of it. Okay. So, you just go up and down. And then, also, in crocheting, it's different stitches. So, you can start with a single stitch. A double stitch, a triple stitch. Um, you can go in and out, only do back stitches. So it's like a lot of different things, like those different blankets and stuff that you might see, like a granny square. Um, what's the other one? Well, granny square is my favorite, so we'll stick with granny square. You might see a granny square. You might see different patterns, or some people even get good to the point where, like, they can do um pictures um crocheting okay where like you use um different graphics so it's a lot of different things you can do with crocheting i love it i love it now what has been one of your most challenging pieces that you were like i'm gonna make that no i ain't gonna make that i'm gonna make that no i ain't gonna make that no you know what i'm gonna make it so i think for me learning how to do it's like corner to corner that was, that's challenging for me right now. Um, another project that I made, because for me, I just make stuff. I usually don't follow patterns. I just make it on top of my head. So I made a skirt for a fashion show at school. And that was like really time consuming because I had to make it to where somebody could wear it and then make loops for the skirt and set it up. So that was like a whole thing, making that. So it's, it's a tedious task, but once you see that it's done, like you get super excited once it's finished yeah so that yeah. was one project that just was like super intense for me so what do you do what how do you set up your environment to crochet like you set the vibe you turn you on some music what you yeah, doing so me i'm big into music i might be playing trap music one minute then praising the lord in the next minute so sounds I usually, about right <laughs> yeah so so i usually i'll get the yarn that i want to use I'll have my crochet hooks there. I'll probably have like my tablet with like 
a video playing music or a car like because i like bob's burger that's my favorite cartoon so i watch that <laughs> um that's bob's burger and i'll just play music so uh when i was working on my collection for when i got ready to launch my business i was listening to a lot of drake i love drake I was listening to a lot of Nipsey Hustle, uh, Meek Mills, um, all those different songs. So like, music motivates me. So like, like what do I say? I love trap music and crochet. <laughs> hey, trap so, and crochet. So I'll listen today, to that and it'll just it'll just hype me up. So that's usually what I do. I'll sit in a space. I might just sit in a chair, but for my business, I would sit at the table. And I would say, okay, I'm making this hat, so I'll have everything set up. And then the hats were lined, so I would sew the hats, cut out the um, pattern, put the lining in the hats, and make them like that, and then sew everything together. That is amazing. Now, for a person, like, this yarn was already multicolored, or did you combine them? No, so this yarn, a lot of yarn will come mixed colors, and it'll come out in different ways. But you can always put yarn together, like the two colors that they're using. It's a light blue. It's like a gray and a blue. You can mix these colors together and double it up and come out with like a sweet little style that you want to have for a hat or a scarf or a blanket or whatnot. Beautiful. Now, tell us about Asia Nicole Creations. That is your baby, your business. I remember... Um, when we were attending McKenzie High School and all you ever talked about was, I want my own clothing line, I want my own fashion, I want to design, I want to make stuff. And you had this little notebook where you used to draw. Yeah. And I remember you had like little sketches in your notebook. Um, and you were talking about um, just being able to, you know, dress some of the celebrities with some of your pieces and um, just being able to... Um, walk into your dream and now that you have that business and, and you've manifested your your business yes. how does that feel on the business side because it ain't just crocheting you know yes. and i think a lot of times people open up a business and um they're great at a skill or a task and mm -hmm. they don't know the business uh part of certain things what was that like stepping out on faith starting your business like you know what i don't care if i don't got everything i don't care if everybody ain't don't know about asian yeah, exactly races. What was that like? So for me, okay, this is what happened. We ended up being in a pandemic, right? So mm -hmm. I was laid off maybe for like two months. And before the pandemic, I would make stuff. Like people would be like, hey, y'all need you to make me a hat and a scarf. I need a blanket. Um, and I would do pop-up shops and make stuff for people, different colors, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so once the pandemic hit, because I had been talking about starting my business for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm like, we got to put up or shut up. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm about to launch this business. Like, I'm about to do it before the year is out. So I went online, got my LLC, said, okay, we're going to do two, product, two products. Because what kept holding me back was like, I was like, no, I need all the colors. I need all the various things. And I was like, no, we're going to start with this. So... For me, it was like a challenge. It wasn't, it was challenging, but I just had to push through it. Yeah. So I had already taken pictures. I used my pictures um, to advertise the items that I was selling and to set up the site. But the thing about starting a business is that it's intense, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you super happy once you get the LLC, once you start the business and get the website, and you're like, oh, we own it popping, like let's get it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you have to manage it, you have to promote your business, you have to be okay on the days when you're like, damn, ain't nobody buying my stuff for mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what I'm supposed to do. So you just gotta keep pushing, cause just because today isn't the day that 7,000 people just bought your stuff, tomorrow might be the day, and just yeah. start where you are. So it's like promote your business, be your authentic self, you know what I'm saying, and go from there. So that's been some of my challenges. And then just like the cost of making stuff, because I'm just making things, but then you got to think about Time. How, yeah, how long it took you to make the yarn, um, how much did the yarn cost, um, how much you paying yourself an hour to make it. Like It's like a lot that goes into it. So those were some of the challenges. And then sometimes you can also have the imposter syndrome that can come up. Because, mm -hmm. like, I've had that. And I'll be like, I ain't nobody going to buy my stuff. I ain't nobody, don't nobody want this. 
or damn, they might not like it in this color. I might not have enough options. Mm -hmm. But you got to push through that and just know that's just negative self-talk. And you got to just be like, I just had to tell myself, like, shit, everybody needs a scarf and a hat. That part, especially in the D. Yes, like, it's winter out here. People want gifts. People like one-of-a-kind things. So you just got to push through. And that's what I have been having to do is just push through and say, okay, let's get it. Then the consistency. So me and consistency, anybody that follow me on social media know that me, patience, and consistency got a rocky relationship. Right? <laughs> that we so, all. It's one of those things that I. You crocheting, crocheting. Yes, you getting it. I see you over there. <laughs> you focus, focus. You ain't. So, so, you crochet like a mug. Dang, you are slow. Look at mine. Okay, okay so you, we can start making your second row because you getting it, getting it. Okay. You second row? Second. Yeah, because you can't just have like a long string. You got to add stuff to it. Okay. Yes, girl. Yeah, I said it before I take it back. We're going to add more to it. Y'all, yeah. we are learning how to crochet with. Miss Asia Nicole of Asia Nicole Creations. Um, she is a Wayne State almost graduate and student studying For fashion one design day. and marketing. One day. Yep, the day is coming, honey. Yeah. And she has been crocheting for um, since she was 19 years old. And she is a part of a, a Detroit crocheting company and organization that supports. And I think it's extremely important. In the time frame that we live, as you all know, the, the world shut down, right? And people who usually would be able to go to the gym or go do this or go do that were not able to do so. And it's always a blessing when you can learn new skills. I'm all about learning new skills. You never know when you will need to use a, what was that knot called? A slip knot. A slip knot. <laughs> You'll never know when you need to crochet something real quick. And, and you don't know what, um, you don't know where God will take you where you can say, oh, I learned how to do that. Or I may not be a professional like Asia Nicole. And this may not be my ministry in terms of fashion, but I can make a mean some something. something. Yeah. And see, when you discovered that, when you discovered that skill and, and that talent, what did it feel like when somebody bought your first piece? Like gave you some money. They ain't know you. They want somebody off the love, off the yeah. cuff. It was like, you bought my stuff. So the first time somebody asked me about my stuff, and they was like, "Oh, I want to get this," and I was like, "Okay, all right, all right, okay." Um, I'm like, "All right." So when they got it, I just was super excited and I just felt just grateful, you know, and I, and I was like, well, I hope you love it. Like if you need anything else, just let me know. Like I was super hyped. I was turned up. Really? Yeah. And then I'm always turned up because like, I remember I, one of my classes, we went to like, a, um, what are those called? To a vendor show, like mm -hmm. for different stores, the boutiques where they'll go buy their clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were walking by one place and I had this scarf on and the lady was like, Oh, I want that. Who made that? And I was like, you want this? She was like, I was like, oh, I made it. So it, it just goes back to people see you. Like, even when people say they don't see you, they see you. Yeah. And you just never know. Like, you could have that one idea that could pop. And that could be your idea. So I just be, I be super excited. Like, I'm always excited that people want to buy my stuff. And I don't know how to describe it. I don't even know how to describe the feeling. Like, it just be like, okay, then, like, hell, like, they want my stuff. Like, hell, yeah, they want my stuff. I'm yeah. super excited. So, it's, I just be happy about it. Honestly. That's beautiful. Now, what do you see or, or see for yourself with the crocheting? Like, what, what's your ultimate goal? What are we manifesting for your life? Because I got my followers and my people on my line. What we got? We got to continue. Okay, okay, crochet. You're right about that. Learning to crochet and knitting is an amazing skill to learn. Yeah. You'll never be without clothes. Yes, and some more stuff. Come on, girl. Oh, we got Kiera Sheer. Hey, girl. Hey. We out here learning how to crochet with Asia Nicole Creations. Hi. She is. You got Kiera Sheer. She watching you, girl. Oh, hey. You know what? I love your music, girl. <laughs> Thank you for being on this live. Look, okay, so you're crocheting and somebody brought your uh, merchandise and that felt good because it's black entrepreneurs. Was that yeah. always something that you were looking to become um, an entrepreneur? And I know you always wanted to be a fashion designer, but was that something that you were looking to do? 
I would have to say yes, because even okay. when I was little, me and my cousin used to, you know how you stunt you young, you're like, oh, we're going to have a lemonade stand, we're mm -hmm, going to sell jewelry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we would do that. We would like all kind of stuff. Like, we're going to paint these pictures, we're going to get people to buy them. So I feel like it was always something in me that I wanted to do, but I think taking that first step of doing it was something that had you kind of, you'd be kind of uneasy, but that's the part of where you always got to just believe in yourself. Like, at the end of the day, you always got to be the one that believes in you. Because yeah. other people might be like, well, girl, I don't know. Or people used to be like, why are you walking around with all that yarn in your purse? We out about to go to the movies. You don't need no yarn in your purse. I used to be like, girl, I'm over here doing me. Like, if I want to crochet while we waiting, that's what I'm about to do. You know? So, just just being yourself and knowing your skills, I would say. So, how do you, how do you encourage yourself when... Because I remember you saying, like, sometimes you, you feel like, dang, you ain't going to buy my stuff. Or, you know, you see some people... Um, progressing in their business um you know faster or, or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. how do you keep yourself encouraged so i realized that every person isn't your person right mm -hmm. everybody does not like the same thing so mm -hmm. there's always going to be somebody who you got something that they want you got something that they like right mm -hmm. so i just try to keep it a buck and just do the things that I think are creative and go off of the inspiration that I feel like, cause you know, God will lead you and he'll guide you and, and show you different stuff. And it'd be like, well, I don't know if I like that color, but it'd be like, no, get that color. That color mm -hmm. gonna do something. Mm -hmm. um, so you be so listening yeah. to the, you be listening to the spirit. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm trying to. I, <laughs> we all do. I try Ain't to. nobody perfect. So it's, um, I just keep myself encouraged cause I'm like, this person might not be my customer, but it's somebody who's going to be my customer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you might have that one piece that that person is like, oh, I really like that. I really want this. Or, you know, you, you'll you see who your people are. You'll, you'll find out who your people are. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I love, especially being in the media industry, you end up finding like-minded individuals. You do. You Everybody do. you can't talk certain conversations with. That's just like a person who is in, in sports or a person that's in music or a person that's into fashion. I'm listening. Oh, you, you have those. You have your tribe. You know, those people yeah. that just get you. You don't have to, you don't have to put on the moose okay. moose or feel any type of way. They just, they, they feel. First of all, I okay, just want to so say this. One of the students here. This <laughs> They ain't playing no games, okay? Yeah. Look at mine, y'all. I'm trying, okay? Okay. So I write papers and speeches. I don't crochet, so but I'm doing. It's really good, right? I'm doing pretty. I'm really doing pretty good, good y'all. So the only thing for myself, that that's all I did. Is the what you say, girl? Okay. Exactly. Okay. There is someone like always cool willing to buy your train. stuff. Amen. It is always okay, somebody man. willing to buy your stuff. Yeah. That part. So, cause you always want to make sure y'all. Hey y'all. Okay. okay. I hope y'all are enjoying so, the Thursday know. throwback Thursday you? with us. We doing. So, <laughs> we learning how to crochet with Asia here. Creations yeah. down in my building. You wanna um, listen. Make sure that you guys like, come out. We are having a wonderful a weekend, Valentine's Day weekend. You wanna listen. bring it through the hall. Once we are here with Asia home, Nicole Creations. I hope you guys are you enjoying yourselves, cause okay. it is getting ready to go down. Now, Asia. You gonna do like you did before. Yeah, so we doing that. Yeah, go down. Yep, to the make same. the row. So yeah, up, down. Way. Up, then down. Then yep. up, then down. Up, then okay. down. Up, then down. Okay. So the only thing is that for you, you might have to try to open these up a little bit. All right. To see the holes. But once you get past this, you can always take all of this apart and start over. Okay. okay? All right. Oh, wait. So you wait a minute. You just gave her another. Um, so, yeah. So you took it to the next her. level? Yeah, we started on her second row. You got a second row? Oh man, I want a second row. I ain't even, look, God said focus on what you focus on. <laughs> okay. It's so not that you. bad. You did a good job. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate yeah. the encouragement, y'all, because you did do a good job. I'm not look I, I live my life this way. Progress, not perfection. I'm never going to be perfect for anybody in any form, in any way, or any life. And if you're striving for progress, that means you are always going to be better than where you started. So when I leave here today and go home to whatever I'm going to go do, guess what? I can say I learned how to crochet the Asia Nicole style, okay? Exactly. So I'm about to turn this video on real fast. Okay. I'm over here being not, <laughs> not showing my stuff. Yeah. Um, hi. 
How you do it? Why do what? Where is this? In your older age. Hold on. What's that? Can't Snapchat? Find this. Find this stuff. What's this? I'm trying to do this. What is this? How you do the live? Where you go? How you do it? You ain't on there. Oh. Well, beat shot G. Golly. What? What? Bet you my oh. golly. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I'm screaming. I'm on there. Am I on there? No, I, I don't know where you keep going back to. Let's go here. Let's go here. You hit the reel and boom. Okay, when you're ready, me. I can hit the button for you. Hit the live. Oh, I should do it on my business page. Look at me in the middle of a whole interview trying to get pointers. Nope. Know. We're in the middle of a workshop and it's Wait called Learning How to Crochet the Asian so I Way. I should do it on my business page. It's your person. Page. If you have more followers on your personal page and more oh, yeah, active on your personal page, then I would do my personal page. Okay. Okay. Am I on there? Oh, hit the button. Okay. Hit the button. Oh, I'm about to die, though. oh hey, y'all. Y'all just see me. Okay, so look, I'm in my crochet class. I'm being interviewed by Jaja Hubbard. <laughs> <laughs> it's is, um, <laughs> is Asian Nicole crocheting how to crochet, right? <laughs> And I felt like I was leaving everybody out, right? Because I'm going to see her live and probably add it to my page too. But I figured I should come on here and talk to y'all, right? So chime in if you want to learn how to crochet. Here's some stories and whatnot. Okay. So back to you. Back to me. So this is good, right? Okay. Next time you do it, mm -hmm. you want your tension to be looser, okay? Okay. You got to be able to get this hook through there. Okay. So what you're going to do is... Okay, sis. Look, I ain't never been warned about being too tight, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Call them, girl. Call them up. So Tell you see them. how you go. You want to go through here? Mm hmm So the whole thing is that when you're crocheting in the future, guys, you want to make sure that your first chain is a little looser, right? And you can always tighten it up as you go along. Now tell them what the chain is again. The chain is... To make it's the base to your project. To any project, you have to start off with one chain. You might chain four, you might chain a hundred and seven, right? But that's your base chain, okay? And so you your foundation. To, yes, your foundation, exactly. It's your foundation. You want the loops to be looser at the bottom so that you can get your crochet hook through. If you can't get your th crochet hook through, Normally, you're gonna have to start over, right? And it's okay to start over in anything you do. Just oh man, that was a word. Okay, uh, okay. Evangelist Asia. Oh, you so funny. It's okay <laughs> to start over in any area of your life. Sometimes we be so worried about what somebody gonna say about us and how they gonna feel about. Exactly. Listen, baby, you only get one life. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is live right now, happening as it's happening. Exactly. So once you get, so that's where you at right now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to go through, you're going to go through the loop. And you know how you started with your first row? Mm -hmm. You're going to chain through here, one, pull it through, and then bring it back through here. Now you done made your first loop on your first row. Then you go through the next hole, right? This is so beautiful how, I wish y'all could see it the way I'm looking at it. There you mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. Pull it through. Mm-hmm. 